You know, it's quite nice being immune to damage forever. How about we do it in, I don't know, every build? Hello, my fellow sorcerers. Welcome to day where technically it's a build guide, but it's kind of a universal build guide in that it's going to apply to essentially every single build you run if you are pushing the pit or wanting to do difficult pits or just generally feel like, I don't know, being a mortal, because this is a lot of fun. The only caveat, well, we'll get to it, okay? So what's actually going on? Well, I had my sorcerer discussion a, a couple days ago, and that's all well and good, and I still stand by that in most of the content, sorcerer's an absolute blast to play. So many viable and varied builds, so many cool playstyles, you fly it through all of the farming you need to do, it's wonderful in open world and easier stuff, boss laddering, nightmare dungeoning, low tier pits, the ones that you actually need to do for your masterwork, it just really falls down when we try and, you know, do the difficult stuff where the only reason to do the difficult stuff is to say you've done the difficult stuff. Now, I was about to finish saying how when it comes to the hardest content, Sorcerer is undeniably the worst class and needs some help. But actually, it's just got this help. I made this video a little bit ago for you guys, and since then, and worry not, the uh, Flame Shield Immortality applied to every build still is solid, still works, nothing's changed there. This is a completely offensive change that has happened, and what a change. A hot fix. We have had our problem children de-problemed. Frigid Fate, Storm Swell, Shredding Blades, Glinting Firebolt, and Enhanced Firewall are now doing what they should be do. Proper multiplicative damage at, from the looks of things, their full values. Which cannot be stressed enough how big of a damage increase this actually translates, and when incorporated into the current best pit pushing sock build, which is a bit of a firewall, a firebolt, infinite flame shield, teleporty, and then shatter, well, we suddenly can reach some serious heights, and those heights are being reached. Last I checked, we have pushed past a tier 132, which is like, hello, Bob, and we can kind of almost see necromancer in the distance now which is ridiculously exciting and honestly i can't wait to see what actually happens from here on out basically though storm swell frigid fate back on the menu they are in most sock builds so the rest of this season might be very very kind to us for now though let's talk how to make all of your builds Immortal. See, Sorcerer has at least one thing that is better than every other class. Teleport! Okay, Sorcerer has two things that is better than every other class. Teleport, and the focus of today, Flame Shield. The ability to just go completely immune, take no damage, be unaffected by literally any effect. I mean, it's ridiculously good. And it's how uh, the pit pushing has been done for Firewall Firebolt with the new unique gloves. It's really, you know, kind of absolutely achingly boring to sit there just firing Firebolt, doing kind of little tickle damage relative to the other classes until the boss eventually dies. So the plan then is, can we get permanent immune immortal flame shield onto other builds? And the answer is yes, but actually no, but actually yes, but the rest of this. So what are we actually looking at here? Well, the thing is, currently in my Blizzard build that I also showed a few days back, absolutely loving it, destroying through the pit, heading to tier 100 plus, great. So step one then is cooldown reduction. And if I just get naked real quick, of course, by default, you have no cooldown reduction. I'll put Shaco back on, that gives the 8.1%, we now have 8% cooldown reduction. Cool. If I was to put on a Tal Rashes, let's say you use X-Files even more, use a necklace with some cooldown reduction, you get your focus with the implicit and the extra, and it starts to really stack up. We're now up to 
45%. That's very, very cool. Now, Flame Shield, by default, as we know, has a 20 second cooldown and only lasts a couple seconds, increased by 0.1 second per rank. That is an 8 second gap to somehow get down. So if I put all of uh, this back on again, get all that cooldown reduction going, well, we're now at 13 seconds. That's that's a lot more doable. That's a lot more appreciable. So what's the actual max cooldown reduction you can get to? Well, if you temper all of your cooldown reduction affixes and you hit uh, the 25% on them all, hell, ideally all three times for 8 and 12, you can reach about 60% cooldown reduction or so. Which then means uh, that our lovely flame shield has an 8 second cooldown. So, step 2 then is we want flame shield itself to last as long as possible. So we do that by giving it more ranks. Of course, so we can, you know, just put the full 5 out of 5 in, which will make it be 2.4 seconds, so that's a good start. We get an extra 4 ranks from a Shaco, if you have one, went up to 2.8 seconds. And then we can get a chest piece like this one, which I am ridiculously happy to have found, that adds another 4 ranks. Now, of course, you can masterwork this, keep hitting the flame shield, get it to, to even more ranks beyond that and ultimately we can end up in a place where flame shield will last about 3.4 3.5 seconds so eight second cooldown 3.5 second duration starting to look a lot better now there's only four and a half seconds missing the third of this four step plan to immortality on any build because remember you can Put this on any build, use these cooldown affixes, masterwork them, use a chest piece with flame shield, etc. So next up is tempering. And the tempering you're going for is flame shield duration. You can get this on both your chest, you can get it on your legs, and you can get it on your amulet. So when we have enough of it, we keep masterworking it, we can increase flame shield duration pretty easily by at least 60%. So we have 3.5, we increase it by 60%. So we have, let's say, the maximum ranks from a masterworked up greater affix flame shield chest and everything else. We increase it by 60% from at least two masterworked flame shield durations, but ideally three from your necklace too. Well, we're now looking at a flame shield that lasts about five and a half seconds. That's five and a half seconds duration with a eight second cooldown from all our cooldown reduction. That means there's only two and a half seconds missing for permanent immortal flame shield. So where do those last two and a half seconds come from? Now you might be thinking, whoa, 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 we can just do what Firewall Firebolt is actually doing, which is just have some boots or some necklace or, you know, something that has Hectic on it. And Hectic, of course, being the your basic attacks, make your random cooldowns reduce. We only have Flame Shield on the bar, so it always chooses Flame Shield. And yes, you technically can do that, but that forces you to play a basic attack build. And the goal of all this is to become permanent Flame Shield Immortal while playing a much better, both in damage output and fun, build. So no matter what you're doing, you can go crazy Immortal in the pit. So we ignore Hectic. So what does that leave then? Of course, as you might well have guessed, Ice Blades, our fourth step on this plan. So Ice Blades, when they hit, they will lower cooldowns by 0.5. That's all well and good, but only 20% of that odd 0.1 is actually given to other skills. So remember, we have a two and a half second gap to actually make up here, which means we need in the five and a half seconds that Flame Shield now lasts, Ice Blades to hit a target 25 times in five and a half seconds. So five attacks a second. Ice Blades are capped at six that you can have summoned out at once. So we kind of need to really push this. 
Of course, then, we take our Ice Blade enchantment so we can increase them and pump them out, which is all well and good, and we have it on our bars too. So, with that going on, well, uh, we have it attacking, and as you can see, it's off. But it's not exactly attacking really fast enough to matter. If I actually use my Flame Shield and then summon a couple Ice Blades, it's certainly helping, but it's not exactly powering it down like we need to. So, what is the missing solution here? Well, actually, attack speed. Because now your player stats get transferred to your minions, your summons, which yes, applies to our conjurations, you can do something like put uh, Esu's Ferocity to get that 75% attack speed on your necklace, make sure you take the key passive in uh, Esu's Ferocity too, and then if we go uh, to a boss, but first, look at the Ice Blade, just one, two, three, for that's the kind of pace at which it will attack. So here we are with a boss then. Look how fast the Ice Blades start attacking once Esu's Ferocity kicks in. There we go, and they're off, and look. Doof, 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 doof. They absolutely go mental when it comes to their attacks now because they've suddenly gained 75% attack speed, which is no joke, which means we can actually give our Ice Blades potentially 100% attack speed. So how could you do that? Well, there's who's Frosty at 75, and then we just take Accelerating for 25, and there you go, that's 100% attack speed. Which means we can actually have ourselves up to six Ice Blades all attacking 100% faster, which is roughly about 12 attacks a second, which is comfortably enough to get Flame Shield off cooldown again when you have max ranks in it, max Flame Shield duration, temper, and max cooldown reduction, and then some, which means you don't have to have gear that perfect. It does need to be nearly that perfect, but doesn't have to be exactly perfect. So TLDR then, on any given build that you're playing, get cooldown reduction on every piece of gear that you can have it on, Masterwork hit it at least twice, get ranks of flame shield from everywhere that you can, on your skill tree, from Shaco, from a chest with it on, Masterwork it on the chest. Then, temper it with flame shield duration on your chest, your legs, and potentially your necklace. Try and hit it on the masterwork on everywhere that doesn't have cooldown reduction, where that takes priority. And then, run the Ice Blades enchant, along with Ice Blades on your bars, while also having a source of attack speed, like Esu's Ferocity, with the key passive, Esu's Ferocity. Those four steps will see you having a permanent... Fire Flame Shield going, and therefore immortality on any given build. As a quick example then, I will swap to Frozen Orb real quick, as that one I think has the potential to work the best, simply because Fractured Hourglass is going to summon loads of extra Ice Blades, so we can kind of guarantee it. So here I am then, swapped to Frozen Orb real quick. If we have a look, my actual raw cooldown reduction is only, air quotes, 40%, so there's still 20% more to get there. I've got a 12.4 on Flame Shield. I've got cooldown reduction from my Focus, just using random gear to show the point, of course. Cool reduction on Tal Rashes, cool reduction from Fractured, and then cool reduction from Harlequin. Got the four ranks of Flame Shield from Harlequin, got the four from the chest, and then five actually into the skill for 13, and then just a random Flame Shield duration temper on a random pair of legs, so you can see it in action. And that gives me a 3.6 with a 12, which is still ways off what I've shown is possible, but you can see that it still is going to work out quite well for us, as we actually go through this and start attacking the training dummy. You'll see just how fast Flame Shield actually comes back with all the attacking and boom! There is only a three second cooldown left on my Flame Shield when it finishes despite four seconds there, depends on how many Ice Blades are up, but that shows you the power of this combination. Yeah, it's about four seconds, so I am only missing four seconds to be permanently immortal on this randomly thrown again frozen orb build. That is potent. 
And while Frozen Orb, because of all its extra ice blades, is particularly suited to this, it can apply to Ball Lightning, it can apply it to Blizzard Ice Spikes, it can apply to any build, because none of what you have to do is that build restrictive. Every Sorcerer build is running Ice Blades and the Ice Blade enchant just by default, for the most part, because it's so good. Every Sorcerer build wants as much cooldown reduction as possible anyway. Every Sorcerer build can gain from putting 5 out of 5 Flame Shield, having Harlequin, and using one affix on your chest, which is free anyway, to get more Flame Shield. And every Sorcerer build can afford to give their defensive tempers to Flame Shield because there's nothing else that they need to be used on. So, heartily recommend this approach if you really want to go all in on it, farm all of the perfect gear, masterwork it all up perfectly, and, well, good luck to you on your infinite Flame Shield Immortal journey. I really can't stress enough how much it's possible and how much it might really be the secret weapon for sorcerers. In any case, our damage still definitely a lot lower than all the other classes and does need a little bit of a buff when it comes to that pit push. But hey, this is neat and it's fun that it's possible on not just the snooze fest that is Firebolt and Flame Wall. So for now then, I hope you've enjoyed this build upgrade guide to all of your builds. Like if you did, subscribe for more, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage, is, uh, goodbye.